Hi everyone and welcome to Lake Oswego United Church of Christ. My name is Adam Erickson and today I want to talk with you about one of the passages we'll be discussing this Sunday at church. We start at 1030. Hope to see you there. So this Sunday we're going to be talking about a resurrection story. Why? Because this is the third Sunday of Easter. We typically think of Easter as just being one Sunday, but Easter actually lasts for seven weeks. Why is that the case? Because the glory and wonder and mystery and amazingness that is Easter cannot be contained in one Sunday. Can I get an amen? So Sunday, we're going to be talking about Jesus' resurrection story, where he's on the road to Emmaus. He's walking with some disciples. The disciples are walking on the road, and they're sad. And Jesus comes up to them as a stranger and says, hey, what are you guys talking about? And they start talking about how disappointed and how they had so much hope in Jesus as the prophet, uh, as the one who was going to redeem Israel and he failed. So all of their hopes and their dreams were dashed because Jesus was killed. Which begs the question, what are our hopes and dreams? What have you been hoping for that maybe didn't come to fulfillment or to fulfillment in the way that you had expected? Because Christian tradition still claims that Jesus is the one who has redeemed the whole world. But he does it not through typical ways that we think of, defeating the bad guys, throwing the oppressors off of our backs, getting the Romans out of Israel, or defeating our political enemies today. That's not the way to redemption, according to Jesus. The way to redemption is through nonviolent love. And I would tell you that if I was one of the disciples, I would think that this was um, not right. <laughs> I, would, I would have my own ideas about how to redeem the world, and it wouldn't look a lot like how Jesus redeems the world. So I can see how these disciples on the road to Emmaus were disappointed. And they had all of their hopes were dashed because the one that they had hoped would redeem the world was killed. But this, according to Jesus, as he walks with them, he tells them that the Messiah had to suffer. Why did the Messiah have to suffer? Because he came into the world to show us how to love. And so much of the world is not based on love. It's based on defeating our enemies. But Jesus comes, and the resurrected Jesus comes, to show us a different way of redemption. One that may cause us some suffering in a world that is hell-bent on violence, that wants to redeem ourselves through defeating our enemies. But Jesus says, no, you redeem the world not by defeating the stranger or the enemy, but by loving them. And the story goes on to show how to do this. One of the ways that we do this is the disciples invite Jesus, who they see as a stranger, they don't recognize him yet, into their house and say, hey, come, come have dinner with us. And it's this hospitality, this graciousness that we show to strangers, to potential enemies, that might help redeem our relationships, that might lead us into relationships that aren't built on hostility, that are built on love. And we're told in the story that Jesus basically has what we call communion with, with these people. He breaks the bread, and in breaking of the bread, their eyes are opened, and they see that it's Jesus in their midst, and he vanishes. I wonder if the reason that maybe we just see all of our meals with one another as just being meals is because our eyes aren't open to the fact that God is always present in our midst. So a meal isn't just a meal. 
their God moments. Communion that we share here at church isn't just a time for us to eat with one another. It's a time that our eyes may be opened at the person who's on our right, who's behind us, who might be on our left or in front of us, may just be God in the flesh among us. This is what communion is about. Um, so those are some thoughts about our story this Sunday. I uh, hope you can join us at 1030 here at Lake Oswego United Church of Christ. Until then, grace and peace be with you. Bye-bye.